conventional farming methods or, or what I, I refuse to really call them conventional because it's what is conventional was really the old way. The indigenous way was the conventional way. Uh, I just like to call them chemical poison farming, you know. Uh, when you look at their cost production, you know, they have to buy bags of that. And then you look at the organic, you still got to buy bags of that. Whereas the natural, you just got to make them, you know. Like this right here, this is uh, purslane, high in omega, but nitrogen, this is a source of nitrogen for us. And I'm going to make uh, what we call FPJ or fermented plant juice. Uh, you can do this process pretty much with any weed that's in your garden or on your farm and just look for what is a prolific weed or plant that is growing there on your land and look for that and think that why does that weed thrive? Obviously what's in that plant has enzymes and hormones that thrives in this environment. So we will extract that and spray it back onto your plants to encourage the growth of those plants that you're focusing on to flourish. So you're just taking what nature has, is telling you, yeah, and, and now transferring it from a 3D plant form into a water soluble liquid form. And, and we, um, create this as our fertilizer amendments. This is like purslane. Yeah. So this is the source that uh, I use for um, uh, FPJ. Can you see this guy? Yeah. So then um, what I normally do is I'll just, uh, you can see how succulent, uh, some guys call this like the Portulaca family. But the purslane family, yeah. So what we're trying to do is get the sap out. So we're going to start off here with um, just trying to get them smaller. You can use um, comfrey. Um, you can use the flower of the banana. You know, the heart. Yeah, I would, I would cut that open into little flakes and um, extract that because that would have a higher level of potassium. Okay, and then what we do is um, take uh, raw brown sugar and um, pretty much kind of eyeball for me, it's just, what you want to do is just get the sugar mixed pretty well uh, so that it coats. You want the sugar to get all around all of the edges of the purslane. I mean, if you don't have more. Yeah, so get them kind of like evenly mixed. What you're basically trying to do is just coat everything. Yeah, you don't want to use molasses. Molasses is a liquid form of sugar, but the granular dried form of sugar um, creates osmotic pressure that will extract whatever liquid is in the plant, it, uh, the sugar flakes will soak it up. But if it's wet, then you're not creating that osmotic exchange to take place. Because you, you want that friction from the, the dry stage of sugar to absorb and suck out the moisture that's in the plant 
apart. It's starting to happen already. It's starting to get moist. Yeah? Yeah. So that. So then what you do is coat it. You got it that, press it down. Then coat the top with a layer. Huh? And then that's good. You know, normally you would, um, to keep any of the ants out, kind of like clean the top, any of the creatures, you can put like a paper towel and kind of rubber band it off, let it sit. You want to let it be able to breathe because there is an exchange, uh, a chemical exchange. So you want to let that dissipate out. Uh, and then it'll just be fermenting. So this is called, the fi finished product then is you'll, you'll see after about four or five days, you'll see uh, it'll be sitting in liquid. And um, then you just strain out the liquid and bottle that and that liquid is called fermented plant juice, FPJ. Uh, we use uh, 20 cc's for a five gallon bucket of water. Uh, we use um, eggshells as our source for calcium, bones for a source of calcium phosphate. And so um, this is a whole the cost, very minimal compared to uh, chemical farming cost, compared to organic farming cost. So that's why we more, you know, create our own method of uh, techniques of um, doing it too close to zero expense. So it goes back to creating and monitoring good soil to good plants to good vegetable and fruits, to good people.